Praise be Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today we gather for what's called Laetare Sunday. Laetare meaning rejoice. It's taken from the first word of the collect, Laetare Jerusalem, which means rejoice, O Jerusalem. And so today we take a little pause from our Lenten austerities. It's a day of rejoicing. This is the reason why we also change from the customary purple of Lent to the rose color to signify more of a rejoicing spirit. And now the reason why we rejoice is because we are now approaching and drawing nearer to the celebration of our redemption. The collect, where it says, Rejoice, O Jerusalem, comes from the prophet Isaiah. And he was telling the Jews to rejoice because their time of exile was drawing to a close. They were going to return to the temple and begin their worship of God once again. And so we too rejoice because we celebrate the return from our exile, our exile from sin and from slavery, slavery to the devil and to death. The new Jerusalem, of course, is the church. And so when we say rejoice, O Jerusalem, we're talking to the church. Rejoice, O new Jerusalem. Rejoice, the church, in the redemption that Christ has wrought for us. And so we rejoice over the freedom that Christ has won for us. As I said, he brought us back from exile and from slavery. We see this mentioned also in the lesson today where St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians towards the end, he says, So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free, by the freedom wherewith Christ has made us free. And so Christ has set us free by his redemptive act has set us free, as I said, from sin, from slavery to the devil, and from death. St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, he says, Brethren, it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. The bondwoman, of course, was Agar, and the son that Abraham had from that bondwoman was Ishmael. The free woman refers to Abraham's wife, Sarah, and their son, Ishmael. And St. Paul goes on to say that this is an allegory, these two, but he of the free woman was by promise. One was born according to the flesh, Ishmael according to the flesh, according to nature, according to natural human reason as well. That is, Abraham and Sarah figured they were already in old age. Take your slave girl and bear a child with her so that God can fulfill the promise of making you a great nation. And so you see, Abraham there is acting according to merely natural reason, according to the flesh. And so St. Paul says, but he who was of the bondwoman, was born according to the flesh. But now the other one, Ishmael, but he of the free woman was by the promise. And then St. Paul says, all of this was meant to be an allegory. That is, a sign of future things to come. In, in Agar and Ishmael, they are a sign of the Old Testament, of the law. And Sarah and Isaac are a sign of the New Testament, not the law, but the freedom of grace. St. Paul says, for these are the two testaments, again, the old and the new. From one, uh, the one from Mount Sinai, engendering unto bondage. It is on Mount Sinai, they received the law. The three types of laws, the ceremonial laws, the juridical laws, and the moral laws, the Ten Commandments. 
Okay? And those laws were binding because they didn't receive grace. It's in the New Testament with Christ comes grace and truth. But that Jerusalem which is above is free, which is our mother. That Jerusalem which is above, the heavenly Jerusalem, which is our mother. This is, again, this is a sign of the church and also of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the church who is our mother, that is, through whom we receive supernatural life through the sacraments, baptism, and confession. It's also an image of Our Lady. It says, but that Jerusalem which is above is free. That is Our Lady, who is free of all sin, immaculate, which is our mother. And our blessed mother, too, is our mother in the order of grace. She's, first of all, the mother of Christ, who also is a son of the promise. Okay? The promise made in Genesis 3.15 the woman and her seed. The promise made to Moses in Deuteronomy 18, where God said, there will be a prophet like unto Moses. Jesus, of course, is the prophet par excellence. And also, the promise made to David, a ruler would come from the seed of David and rule over an eternal kingdom. Now we also are children of the promise, if we have faith. Again, those who are natural children of Abraham, the Jews in the Old Testament, they were natural children of Abraham. But those who are of the promise are children by faith, those who have faith in Christ. And so St. Paul says that we are brethren, therefore, and children, not of the bondwoman, but of the free. We are children of our Blessed Mother and children of the Church, wherewith Christ has made us free. And so this is where our joy should stand, rejoicing in these supernatural things about God's love and mercy, the redemption wrought for us by Christ, grace, charity, and the promise of eternal life. And so we should ask ourselves this Sunday, with the time of rejoicing, in what do we rejoice in in this world? In what do we most find our joy? Are we at the bottom of the barrel, in the dregs, finding our joy in vice and sin, that is, a perverse joy, a disordered joy? Or are we perhaps above that, and do we find our joy in simply natural things? It is our family, our friends, um, certain successes, you know, doing well on exams and getting the job we wanted, enjoying natural things like the football game on Sunday. You know, these are all good things, but they're still merely natural and worldly things. Have we elevated our mind to the supernatural and heavenly things? Do we ever find our joy in contemplating the redemption that Christ has won for us, his grace and mercy in our lives, the virtues, doing charitable works, and above all, looking forward to the promise in heaven? And so we can examine ourselves on where we find our joy in this day, which is meant to be rejoicing in those supernatural things and elevate our minds and hearts from here forward during this period of Lent so that we can fully participate with renewed minds and hearts in the Easter celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.